Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've been a penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Tuesday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel, Joel Elkan, and Dennis Dick on the show today. We have a negative note. Morgan Stanley out negative on the cruise line or stocks. We're going to talk about that. We're going to uh, keep talking a little bit more about these uh, Chinese uh, internet stocks that just keep on ripping. Uh, we have one or two earnings. Maybe we'll get to those, but we have two guests on the show today. First off, Kevin Kelly would join the show. He was supposed to join us yesterday. He would join us today. He is the co-founder and CEO of Benchmark Investments. He'll join the show at 8.15. And then at 8.35, we are joined by Nick Shaheen. Joel, what is doing this morning in the S&Ps? Uh, trading in the green by three handles at 27.48.50. Your pre-market high, 51.75. Not a good level to me. The good level to me on the upside is 56.50. That's your March 19th high. On the downside, uh, minor support at yesterday's closing price of 45.50. Uh, your pre-market low, 42 even. Uh, that's just above Monday's intraday low at 39.75. You have Bitcoin futures in the red by $87.50 at 74.20. Really in a quiet period here. Uh, crude oil continuing its descent now in the lower 64 handle, trading down 45 cents at 64.30, fourth down day in a row. Gold under 1300, down 230 at 12.95, and silver in the red by three pennies at 16.40. Good morning, Dennis. How you doing today? Too bad, not too bad. We got some stocks are moving. I don't know the spies are kind of quiet, but some of these Chinese stocks still hot here. So go up more. So go pumped on the so go. So so what did you say? So it keeps going higher. Oh, I, I don't know. I had a good pun in the pre pre market show, and I forget it now. You threw me the softball in the pre pre market, and then throw it you, here. You said it's so going higher, is what. You oh said. yeah, I said it's so and going higher. No one left. <laughs> Spencer went to the so Tiger go, Yankee Spencer game the same. last so night, going so he's higher. a little tired. Right. Anyway, so a Spinner, props to Spinner in the chat. This is all him. Yeah, and, come on, uh, Spinner. He, he called this out. We talked about it on the show yesterday morning a couple of times, and I was like, I like it too. You know, it's like in the setup. So I wanted to wait till it broke through 10. I know some of our chat, you know, our chat was really good on this. I made some, a lot of money on this one. We're talking about the pre-market chat room at premarket.benzinga.com. Um, 974 was the open. A lot of our traders bought the open on Spinner's tip. And the stock just took off. I waited until it broke through 10. So I bought my first shares right around 10 bucks. I bought some more at 10.05. I sold some in the 10.30, 10.40, 10.50 area. And I held, I've held over half of them. I've still got over half of them and it's 11.15. I'm thinking like there's room to 12. I don't know if it goes that high, but I'm probably going to lighten up here or maybe sell out today. But wow, you know, big move. So thank you, Spinner. Hopefully I can sneak out of here before, uh, before it starts to collapse. <laughs> and uh, actually, people were giving you props in the chat for that call yesterday when uh, they're like, way to go, so, Dennis. Oh, that was Spinner. No, I know it was Spinner, but they were like, oh, way to go, Dennis. Well, we talked about it on the show, obviously, yeah. and we brought it to everybody's attention on the show, too. So there's other people that listen to the show and obviously like it as well. Maybe, maybe. I mean, everything is hot. I mean, those Chinese stocks were just on fire yesterday. So, you know, this is like, you know, the, a case of, you know, when you've got, you know, two, three, four of these things climb, they all start climbing. So I, don't, I figure what the metaphor is there. But, you know, IQ at one point in time was up three bucks yesterday morning. I sold out another third. So I only have like a third of my position left in IQ now because this thing has just gone too crazy. I bought it 18 back, I think, I don't know, at the end of April. So one month later, the thing hit 31. I sold, I think, 3115 yesterday on another big chunk of stock. It went up over 32, so I didn't quite get to the high. But I mean, that's just you know huge money too fast. I think it's overdone now. Uh, BILI, I'm all out of that one. The only one I have left now, of, and then there's HUYA, which Spencer, you say reports tonight. So is that and that do we have confirmation HUYA is going to report earnings tonight? Because yep. that would be their first earnings report. They're on my calendar for tonight. Okay, so keep that in mind if you're trading HUYA, that is due to report there tonight, um, at least on Spencer's calendar there. 
And it's over 30 bucks here too. So I don't know if you're going to see the pre-earnings run. We are seeing the pre-earnings run in YY. That's another Chinese stock. I took that one home overnight. Um, I said I was going to do it. I did it again. And I've already sold it here in the pre-market because it's up three bucks ahead of the report. So sometimes these things, these Chinese stocks get hot and you buy them ahead of the reports. I've been talking about this for a long time. We really saw it with NVIDIA when it ran 30 bucks ahead of its report. These things tend to run up ahead of the report. So I think the best alpha sometimes is actually buying them just a few days ahead of the reports and holding on to them. And it seems to work out well. So I'm getting paid in YY here this morning. All right. NVIDIA, uh, new all-time high yesterday, uh, right near the close. 265, yep, 265.74, uh, trading right there now. And, uh, trying to make another new, to, uh, new all-time high. Broke out above 260.50 yesterday. Yeah, multiple stocks breaking out. I mean, Apple here, and it's up here again this morning. It's up another dollar. I know they're doing something with like, what is it? I saw this stream, uh, go by on my Twitter. There's going to be 32 people on FaceTime or something. Did you see this, Spencer? Well, there was like 30 announcements. Yesterday was uh, day one of the, the Worldwide Developers Conference. So they Tim Cook spoke for like an hour or whatever, and it was... Um, what are the there. others? So, so they, you can now do group calling on FaceTime up to 32 people. 30. I saw 30, quote, I quote the Raven saying, I don't know 32 people. I, I, I think it, <laughs> I was I like, th- I don't know if I know 32 people. <laughs> I think 30 was the number, but no, there was so 30, much, okay. there was like a, there was like 30 announcements last night, uh, yesterday. What else did they say? So uh, they, stuff? they, uh, let's see, what else did they do? They sent out, they released a second version of uh, AR kit for developers to keep producing uh, augmented reality apps. They announced, oh, a timer feature for their for your apps, so you can basically set your apps to like sh- to shut off at a certain time. Uh, like I guess if you have kids cool. and you want to get them off the off your off their phone, sure. you can uh, you can like make the app shut off uh, in advance, and so it's a way to fight that addiction. Uh, that was a big thing people were looking at. Um, what else do they announce? It's just a lot of software updates. I mean, they it's like the way I see WWDC is, um, you know, Apple says, look, we made a brand new night version of our desktop background. Let's all clap now. And then everyone claps. And then it's, it, it, but so most of it I I found rather uh, uh, superficial. Uh, there was a couple of good ones. The, the timer one was good. I like the AR kit. Uh, they announced uh, some, you know, updates to, I think, uh, what was it? Apple Podcasts are coming to the watch. They made some changes to Apple TV, but it's mostly just software updates across the board. Uh, I didn't see anything that was too crazy, uh, but the stock did close yesterday higher, so they liked it. And you can't argue with the technicals here. We talked about it yesterday on the show being the breakout. The breakout does continue here. We're up at 193. Somebody was saying it's like 203 is the price where it gets to a trillion market cap. So I got 10 points there. And you could actually be the first stock to a trillion dollars. Carter Worth on CNBC's Fast Money last night. We like to cover Carter because of Taya. He moves stocks. The second he started talking bullish about Apple, it started blasting off. I know because I bought some as soon as he was mentioning it, he's buying it. I bought it last night, I think at like 91, 94. He comes on with his segment and the thing goes up another 35 cents because he's talking about it. It's continued this morning. So, you know, obviously there's a lot of other headlines driving Apple as well and the breakout traders. But Carter Worth kickstarted it last night after hours again. That guy moved stocks. Uh, all time high, 193.42. That was made in yesterday's session. So there's a, one potential target on the upside, 191.83. Uh, was the close that should be support? Jump over here to a couple other stocks are reporting. And I'm telling you, holy cow, these apparel stocks are just monsters. And you got one apparel stock reported just here uh, this morning, and it's GIII, G3 Apparel. I don't know what's going on, but every apparel stock that reports goes up 20%. Here we are, same story here again. We saw it with Ralph Lauren. We saw it with so many different uh, retail stocks as of late. I mean, retail's just hot as hell right now. Well, this is also G- a tremendous report, though. Q1 EPS, $0.22 cents versus a $0.06 cent loss estimate. So they beat the estimate by $0.28. Cents. Uh, sales, $612 million versus $567 million. So they beat that number handily as well. They increased their full-year uh, net sales and net income guidance. The fiscal year sales guidance uh, coming in. Uh, the, yeah, they're increasing it. It's just... Just slightly though, and the EPS guidance they're uh, also increasing, so or came in higher. So increased guidance and a uh, blowout uh, Q1 quarter. I just um, 
you look at it and it's up at seven bucks here though it's up 16 percent here now in the pre-market i mean these things I, am i coming here and shorting it no because i've watched multiple times these things gap and go lately now you know it's going to be a time eventually it is going to come in but i'll tell you if you've been fading these big pops and these stocks that have good earnings you've been getting run over because there has been continued moves afterwards i mean we saw it with ralph loren it gapped up significantly on that report up to 122 it's run another 16 points since then so you're fading that opening print saying this is too much too fast for ralph loren you got murdered you're fading the tiffany opening print when it gapped and it seemed like a crazy move 101 or it closed at 103 gapped up the next morning on the good report opened at 119 so you think wow 16 points that's coming back in you're dead wrong because the stock is now 133 continues to go up every single it's been a green candle every day since the earnings report on tiffany one two three four five six seven eight green candles joel since the earnings report since since it gapped up 18 bucks it's when i had a green candle every day since i mean this momentum this has got to be, we've talked about the Momo market before, but I feel like we're in the most Momo market that we've been in since the bull market started seven years ago. Don't you feel like that? If you've got the ball going your direction, man, it just continues to go. The most Mo market. Is that Momo. what you're, yeah, that the what Mo, you're trying the, yeah, to say? The Mo, Mo, the most, I can't even do it, most Momo market. All right, what about, what about I don't want to go into this Tiffany's chart here because we were talking about maybe it was overdone at 125, now 130. It was, but it doesn't matter. It's get tired. This, this is the market that gets overdone. This ah. is the market that if you're hot, you are so hot. And if you're not, you are so not. That's what this market is. It's all momentum. All right. Uh, well, it got uh, a real nice. I think we started this out talking about G, uh, G3 apparel, right? And then Dennis yeah, go back to that. Got me very, very sidetracked here, which you. G I I I. 52.94, Dennis. 52.94 is your pre market high. We backed off a couple, three bucks off that. So the fact that we backed off so much, I'm going to take a look at a different level and I'm going to take a look at, I saw 51.81. That was your July of 2016 high. We're a buck 80 from there. So, you know, it could just keep going and keep going, but. Got to take out 5180 to 52 first. I think that uh, that should be some resistance coming back on the downside. Since you made that print at 5294, your lowest level has been 4950. So it uh, should be an interesting day here in G Triple I. We're still waiting to Duluth. We're still waiting on that. DLTH. Does the Duluth report today? DLTH? So. Or is that tomorrow? I thought it was tomorrow. They're scheduled for today. There's they are scheduled for, to, after the bell. No, or we're waiting on this morning wait, before wait. before the bell. So yeah, ha haven't oh, seen wow. it come across the wires yet. Maybe so you got another just, peril stock. This one already ran. I mean, you were saying, oh, we could buy this one. Buy. It could run twenty percent. I mean, it's already run twenty percent. The stock was seventeen twenty five, got up to nineteen twenty six. So it's two points on the seventeen dollar stock. That's over twenty percent. It's run in the in the last two days. I mean, this is just absolutely incredible. These, these clothing stuff. We talked about this on the show yesterday when it was, you know, closed at like seventeen ninety five or whatever it closed at, and it's straight up again. I mean, these apparel stocks so hot. I, I said I like the underwear. <laughs> All right, <laughs> uh, let's see what else we have for earnings. Edge Seeker wants to talk ANF. Okay. Um, you know, just sticking while we're sticking with the apparel stocks. Abercrombie sure. and Fitch disappoints. Gets hit, coming right back. I mean, you can't keep these apparel stocks down here right now. Um, you know, obviously, this is physical stores as well. But holy cow, I mean, you know, another one I'm going to think about is the Gap, GPS. It got hit on its report. It's starting to claw its way back there, too. So right now, the market wants to own. They want to own retail. And they're buying them. And when they dip, they're buying them. I mean, Macy's broke out to, you know, 37.20 here this morning. I mean, think about Macy's as $16.00. You know, a year and a half ago, not even a year ago, not even a year ago, in November. So here you've got a stock up back up to 37. I mean, retail is back. Now, am I chasing all these retail stocks and buying them all, throwing them in my investment portfolio? Hell no. But they're hot right now. So I will trade them. And, you know, I will trade them from the long side. But I will tell you, long-term investing on these things, there's still some problems. There's still some major problems in some of these big department stores. So I'm not saying any of these things are out of the woods long-term. But short term, they're hot. You can't argue with it. It's a lot. It started as a short squeeze, and now it's like full on, you know, Momo investors jumping in hand over fist here. But 
don't get married to any of these positions there because I still think from a fundamental perspective, there's still problems in retail. So I think if you, if I was along these things long term, I'd be ringing the register on all these things here right now because I think when we look at these a year from now, I think a lot of these retail stocks might give some of these gains back. All right, Spencer, we got a 15 guest here. We do. Kevin Kelly is our A15 guest. He is with Benchmark Investments. He's the co-founder and CEO there. We'll be right back with Kevin in a moment. Welcome back, everyone. Pre-market prep. Spencer Israel, Joel Conan, Dennis Dick on now with Kevin Kelly. Uh, he is the co-founder and CEO of Benchmark Investments. Kevin, how's it going today? It's going very well. How about you guys? Uh, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. So, uh, Kevin, it, it's been a far too long since we last had you on this show, uh, and uh, just to ask you what you what you had your what you have your eye on this morning. You said you were uh, keeping an eye on the economic numbers. We had obviously had the jobs number on Friday. We have uh, the jolts number, a couple other indicators throughout the week. Fed, I think, is next week, right? So, uh, what? How, tell us how you go about watching those numbers and how much they factor into your overall uh, analysis and picture of the market. Yeah, one of the ways I look at the numbers is to see if they really beat consensus, and if it, if the those numbers do beat consensus, what it what it could mean possibly for the Fed raising rates. Because one of the things that scares me um, the most is should we get a Fed that takes the market by surprise on rate hikes? And one of the reasons why I say that is because we've seen with their quantitative easing programs where they came in and they bought up a bunch of bonds to drive rates down that artificially suppressed interest rates. And so as rates go up, we need investors' expectations um, to be managed through that process because one of the telltale signs that happened um, back in 2013 was the taper tantrum where Ben Bernanke didn't do anything and was just just sent a signal by talking about how he may uh, ease, um, may take off conditions and tighten monetary policy. And so that really scared, uh, that really scared the market. And you saw bonds sell off and stocks sell off. So I always try to keep my eyes peeled on the economic indicators to see if that could move the Fed faster than, than the market anticipates. Uh, we've been talking uh, at least this morning, and really for the past few days, I guess, on the show. Actually, for the, for the past few months, for on the show about this this momentum market and, and these stocks that are just that can just gap and just go, and there's no end in sight. Have you been observing that that same trend? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty fascinating because everything tends to move in in tandem, especially when you look at the market leadership, whether it's financials or uh, technology primarily. But one of the, one of the fascinating aspects of, of the momentum trade is certainly happening in the retail side. Um, you've seen retail stocks across the board tend to 
uh, gap up on earnings and really take off. And there's there's no slowing in sight, especially when you start to look at the charts. And one of the names that has, has consistently uh, surprised me on the momentum side has been Lululemon. So Lululemon um, is, is a company that has really taken off uh, on, on, a, on a price basis and on a company basis, it's had, it's had its troubles, whether they, they've had leadership issues, um, they've had inventory problems. But what's been fascinating is that people are still buying it and the, and, and the, st- the, the clothes, and then the stock has been just on a tear. We're on the line with Kevin Kelly from Benchmark ETFs. Uh, Kevin, quick question for you. All right, so we had the February's jobs number and it was strong and it spooked the market and instigated a major sell-off and the big, you know, the, uh, the correction everyone was looking for. You have a super strong number on Friday and you get the opposite reaction in the market. Uh, what's your take on that? So my take, you know, it's pretty funny. My take on the jobs numbers, um, you know, especially if they're super strong and then you get a market sell-off is, is, is it's showing that the Fed is going to have to tighten quicker because the Fed's really boxed, them, boxed themselves in a corner where they have uh, two conditions, right? And we're almost, and one of the conditions is full employment and we're almost there. And the other condition is uh, inflation. And it seems we've, we've really picked up on inflation. And so the Fed's got to raise rates uh, to get back to normalization. And so, you know, what I like about the market right here, though, is, 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 is it may seem I'm, I'm a little lukewarm this morning, given, given the fact that we're having strong economic numbers, but there's never been a better time to invest in our market because there's so many opportunities. And g- given that there's you know, a lot of momentum, Right. Um, 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 across the board that 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 you can get into that can offer you kind of a, a trade away from momentum. That was you just cool. broke up there a little that, bit. That, there, that was one Kevin. of the interesting uh, Skype glitches we've had, I think, on the show. Can you just re- repeat the, the, the we, just, we, you just broke up your the, last the, the, the end of, of that. You sounded like Mickey Mouse all of a sudden. Yeah, that was a that was a weird glitch there. <laughs> oh, really? In the matrix, just, <laughs> it was just, a weird glitch. Apologies. Just like the end of that. Oh, thought chipmunks! There. Terry Kern said it was. It sounded like chipmunks. Yeah, just the end of that thought here that we missed. Just oh, yeah. Yeah, so the so the end of the thought is is one of the interesting trades that that's happening right now in the rising interest rate environment is that there's opportunities in REITs, right? So there is publicly traded real estate, and they tend they they all tend to have sold off in the beginning of the year. But I've looked over the last couple of months, and you're starting to see a rebound in the publicly traded uh, REIT space because as they've been beaten down. They're trading at a discount to their net asset value. So there's a lot of great names out there. Um, there's about 200 REITs traded on, on the markets here. And so you can invest in REITs across uh, office where you have some of the names are buying back their own stocks at a discount. They're actually selling properties. They're selling buildings to buy back their own stock because it's so cheap. Or, uh, and that's in the office side. Or you can even go into the retail side where they're trading at a 25% discount to net asset value. You have activist investors in there. So that, that's where I'm really keeping keeping my eye on where I can get into a trade where I'm comfortable um, that it, it won't really be affected by the momentum side. And there's a way to get a lot of upside um, left in it. Kevin, can you give us a few of those symbols on those reads that you're looking at? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one of them is KR is KRC. And so oh. they are an office REIT. Uh, they're, they're really well run. They offer a great yield. I think another great name to look at is uh, Prologis, PLD on the industrial side. So everyone talks about the e-commerce revolution. And so if you take a look at Prologis, they are doing exceptionally well. They're growing 17% compound annual growth over the last three years. Uh, they just bought another publicly traded REIT at 85%. Uh, that's already in 85% of its own markets. It gives an above average yield. So I think those are two great names to look at. Uh, you, another fascinating aspect is everyone's worried about technology, right? Technology has its complete momentum. It's running up. But you also have risk there on the regulation side. 
Well, a great way to play that is the data center rates. Look at, look at EQIX, Equinix. 85% of all internet traffic goes through Equinix. It, they have co-location um, for some of the biggest uh, software and hybrid cloud companies. So Microsoft, for example, is a big hybrid cloud player that uses Equinix data centers around the globe. So uh, you get defensive, it's a defensive name because of this reason. They are growing so so fast, but they're also paying out a dividend that when I've looked over the last five years, Equinix has had a 50% downside capture, but 75% upside capture. So what I mean by that is if the market fell 10%, they're only going down less than 5%, but then they're capturing um, 78% of the upside. So it's a great way to play the technology space. What about traditional REITs though? Because they've obviously been in the gutter with interest rates going up here. So why do these ones do better, but the traditional ones don't? Just curious. So I, I, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of underpinnings that are happening um, right now in the, in the REIT side of the business. Um, and these REITs are doing better because they're under levered. So okay. if you look at their balance, if you look at their balance sheet, there's a 45% debt on their balance sheet as opposed to back in. If you go to 2008, 2009, a lot of REITs were levered up 65 to 75%. Okay. So these are really under levered. And when you look at their balance sheets, they're going out five years or more on the debt that they have. Now, let's just say, you know, so they're locking on. in the interest rates at a lower rate. Sorry about that. No, no problem at all. Let's continue with the technology talk here because let's go right into some of these tech stocks here. I mean, you can look at a stock like AMD that has run in the month of May. Uh, basically, in one month here, we're going from 10 bucks to 15 in AMD. I mean, you, and you can look across the board here. Micron went on an incredible run there. It got hit with a downgrade there last week, which kind of stalled it out a bit. But before that, it went from 45 to 60. I mean, there's been a lot of tech stocks, you know, smaller ones have just been on fire in the month of May. Do you see that momentum continuing here as we go into June? Or is this a sector that could start to stall just because it went up so much? Yeah, I, I actually think uh, there is actually more room to run. I think they'll probably take a pause, but but heading into uh, the earnings into the fall, we typically see these names take a breather um, into the summer while people are away. But but people, uh, investors that I've noticed over the last four earnings season have added on more exposure over the summer into technology because they want to get the exposure into the strong earnings season into uh, Q3, Q4. So I think there's actually more room to run. And you mentioned AMD. It always surprised me because AMD uh, sold off in sentiment that there may be some security issues with their chips, um, especially as they go into data centers. And then, <laughs> then it runs up to $15. I look at another name. You talked about small uh, small cap names. There's a yeah. $5 billion uh, data center company called GDS. It trades on the NASDAQ. And they've been up 40% in one month alone. And they're the, they're the third-party data center in China. So um, I think what it has to do is more sentiment on themes. And the four things that are driving these stocks are Internet of Things, virtual reality, AI, and uh, blockchain distributed ledger technology. And so I think people are not going to stop investing in those names because of those future four horsemen are going to continue to drive the stocks higher. It's one last. So if you actually, you know, this is an interesting segment here, you know, mentioning those four. Is there any plays to cover, you know, multiple angles here? Is there any stocks that you really like here still then that, you know, you're looking at, you know, even right now or some of them, you know, is it a little bit like if you weren't on the train, the train has already left the station? Yeah, I, I actually don't think the train has left the station because yeah. uh, we've only started to scrap. Can, can you guys hear me okay? Sorry about sure. that. I didn't know if I was. Yeah, yeah, we got you. Know. We got you. Yeah, great. Okay, so I, I, I don't believe the train is leaving, leaving the station because what we've seen is most of the earnings that has happened in the technology space, especially when I was talking about a lot of those data centers, is that it, that has to do with cloud computing. And so those four things I had brought up, we haven't even started to see the proliferation of the cash flows that'll come from that. And, and what I mean by that is you also see corporate America start to plow capital into productivity um, through those, mostly through AI. What I'm talking about is that uh, productivity is one of the economic numbers that people are talking about. We haven't seen that come through. I think that'll come through as 
as CapEx comes through on corporate America investing in, in, the, in those themes. I'll leave it on the line with Kevin Kelly from uh, Benchmark Investments. He's their co-founder and CEO. Kevin, thanks so much for the time today and uh, have a good one. Thanks for having me, guys. Take it easy. Thanks, Kevin. All right, 8.30. We got five minutes until uh, we bring on Nick Shaheen. Do you want to hit on some quick imbalances real fast? Or you want to uh, yeah, yeah 8.30 just came out. Let's go look. I haven't even looked myself yet here. So uh, Twitter, and we got to talk about this. 179000 to buy. We're going to go to that in just two seconds because it's getting out of the S&P. Bob, a 52000 to buy. AT&T, 92000 to buy. Bank of America, 59000 to buy. But you got to look at the TLT. That's what matters more. TLT is way up. It's up $0.68 cents here today. So you're probably going to see banks weak overall here. That is the driver when Deutsche Bank isn't in the news anyways driving it. General Motors, 30000 to sell. GM had the gap and go as well. And it's continued to run. It's trying to stall here a little bit this morning. But, man, it's got the momentum and this, obviously the wind in its sales right now as well. Nike, 49000 to sell. It's NKE. Uh, not seeing much else, really. Let's go to the Twitter, though, because uh, there was sure. news there. Spencer, give yep. us the details. We've got some S&P changes. There was uh – this is from yesterday after the bell. Monsanto is out of the S&P. Uh, Let's get taken over. Yep. Yep. Monsanto is out. So replacing Monsanto in the S&P 100 is Netflix. Replacing them in the S&P 500 is Twitter. And both stocks, Netflix and Twitter, are trading up substantially on this. At least Twitter. It traded up and kissed 40 last night. Almost. Joel was right on the kisser. Yeah, kiss right. 40. Exactly. Yep. And you know what? I'm trading this thing and I'm like, holy cow, that 40 is a big level. But it had so much. It was just flying at it. And I'm like, I'm too scared. I wanted to short it like in the 3990s on the way up. And I had my finger on the trigger as it was going up. And I remember what you always say is, you know, when it's got so much more than flying through, it's so hard, you know, just to say, okay, this is the point and just to actually pick the top. It's nice to let it stall. And then maybe come back up to that level and then get it when, the, when there's not that much you know momentum flying at it. But it went up there and it came down and never came back up to retest the 40. So you had one shot at it and I hesitated and I did not get that shot because I wanted to short it up at 40. I think I'm still you know looking at that level. The problem is Twitter's so much momentum going. Like it could just go through. But 40 is going to be huge. First time back up here. I almost want to try from the short side in the higher 39s. Just one. And if it takes up 40, you know where your stop is. So it's going 40.05, 40.10. I'm getting the hell out. But just to you know as a swing trade or even potentially a day trade, an upper 39s, I'm going to lean on 40. If 40 goes, I get the hell out. I mean, it hit that's, 40 that's right setup. on the nose. We haven't traded in the $40 handle whew, for quite some time here. You need to go back to 2015. And wow. 2015 in April, you had a high of 53.49 and closed the month at 38.96. So, a lot of air in there in the 40 handle. Uh, we'll see what happens. 40 was your pre market high, but you've pulled back. You've pulled back as low as like in the lower 39s. But to just to right now, it still feels like there's some buyers out there. It's really not pulling back. So if you're trying this for a long off the open, there has been sustained buying all the way down to 39.13. Uh, if not, you could expect uh, you know some sellers to come in. Your pre market high is 40. That'd be a psychological level as well. But man, what a nice run! I mean, this thing was at 33 and a half bucks on May 25th, and now you're touching 40 and you know, going back even in April, it was in the 20 handle. So a uh, nice move there, quick move. I you know, I kind of got, you know, people caught by surprise. I'm not sure what the short interest is in it, but uh, a lot of a lot of confluence there for Twitter to get into the 40 handle. And what's that- your strategy for your stock? Because and just before we get Nick here, we can always bring Nick on the fly here, too. But I mean, you bought the stock back at 17. Yeah. So now you've doubled your money in it. It's 39 bucks, more than double your money. So it's a great call by you. You sticking with it? What, yeah, what's your, what's yeah, your plan? Yeah, I here? mean, it's just. You You're know, like Warren Buffett, man. No, when did you I, become Warren Buffett? I, I you used to be a short term scalper like me, and now you're Warren Buffett over there. You do. got this WDC forever. Now you got Twitter forever. When did you become Warren Buffett? I don't. I don't. Those are like two of the, you know, it just, there's some things you just don't sell, Dennis. You have some things that you don't <laughs> some sell. Some things you just don't sell. Yeah. Twitter and, and, and Western Digital. You just uh, don't sell. Western Digital, <laughs> I'm starting to 
lose my pick. Where is it? I don't like that. Like Where 85. is it? It's like 85. I don't know. Bucks. Get out to 105. You're a little off the highs. Yeah. But you're in like 30 bucks on that, aren't you? Yeah, nice to. I don't know. This Joel one... buys the bottoms. He's a good buy. He's got to find in those bottoms. Yeah. All right. Let's bring Good morning. And we got hey, Nick, Nick here. We're just talking about twi- Joel's Twitter position. So he bought Twitter down at 17 bucks. It's now at $39. So great buy by him. I was just trying to say, you know, what's your game plan? I know Nick will have means for you to protect your profits here. Maybe we should have Nick Shaheen set up an options trade for you in Twitter to protect your profits. You bought the stock. So do a stock replacement strategy, which is ditch the Did, stock. Yeah. Okay. Right. Tell and, us and ditch the stock, book the profits, take a sum of money you want to risk out of the profits, buy calls out for, say, August if you want to stay long and wait for more upside, then you're still long minus uh, the profits that are in your pocket. All right, Nick. Now, you were getting a little bearish on this yesterday. Well, what, I, well I want to ask you, what kept you out of the trade? Because I saw you post well, it and I thought you were, I thought you were hmm. diving in the pool. And you did it. What did you know? Do you like when yeah. you have an idea? And I think this is important for trade psychology because, yeah. uh, boy, you're getting a little windfall here with it trading up a buck 45. So I had a conversation on Twitter yesterday in the chat room on one on one with a new member. And uh, he, he was looking to short it on my note. And I said, I'm not doing it yet because all I have going for me in it is hope that it falls fundamentally i know it doesn't deserve to be at 80 pe or whatever it is so is it four times better than apple i just don't think so so it's a fundamental thing that is overextended however a the technical or positive and this could be could be a giant cup and handle with 45 plus as a target so if i'm long i don't book it yet but i do protect some of the profits and there are plenty of ways of doing that so i told him that i would wait out a few candles to see what happens so I, to that, I want to know if somebody's going to go to jail uh, over this. I mean, the stock was up four percent on the day of the announcement. Before the announcement, somebody that. knew somebody knew something there. So uh, definitely a a lucky, well, not lucky. Due diligence told me to stay out of it, but even then, I would have only risked some money on puts. It's not like I'm going to sell the stock short. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, it, we always talk about that on the show when you see a stock run up four or five percent, then you have major news breaks afterwards. Like, who got the memo on this thing? And I mean, right. maybe you could argue the market was moving and a lot of stuff was moving here in this case. No. But no, no, Nick's conspiracy theory on this one. Well, <laughs> I won't argue with you either. Up, There's some four percent in one day for no reason. I mean, that's like almost uh, an earnings report reaction. Uh, it yeah. just does, doesn't happen that often. But, you know, the market was up. And also Netflix was up. And then I also, in the chat room, in another chat room, I, I posted, I said, five minutes before the market closed, I said, something's going on with Netflix. I'm long and I'm happy about it, but something's going on. And then boom, the headline comes out. Netflix is to join the S&P 100. And then the next headline was the Twitter, the S&P 500. So I see that a lot. Yeah, it, the charts don't lie. The price action doesn't lie. News lies, headlines lie, but not the chart and the price action. Jump over to uh, some of these. I want to talk, and we haven't talked much about them here on the show yet, but these these little Chinese names that have just been like blasting off. And it seems like everything in China is hot. I mean, you can even go to the big names like Alibaba, which is in full breakout mode from 200 to 210. But what I was talking is like this little IQ, B-I-L-I. I don't know if you've been following these little stocks. Uh, I'm next, long but... IQ. Oh, you are? I am too, yeah. actually, still. So I'm interested now. What is your strategy in IQ? Because I've sold... <laughs> So I had some stock and I bought this thing on the, I, you know, uh, just shortly after, uh, well, actually at the end of April, I actually took some heat. I bought it like 18 and went down to like almost 16 and then just started blasting off here. And I was, you know, buying a more on a speculative play. I sold part of my position at 23. I sold another part of it at 31 yesterday, still holding a part. What are your thoughts here? I mean, this is a lot of money fast. I mean, this base thing is basically up like 80% a month. Yeah. So the strategy there is really, really deep. Uh, You plug your nose and you buy it. (laughs) And and I have no strategy on this one. It's just uh, I I want it to be the guy. Are there even options? uh, Yes. There is Uh, options. And and that's how I played it. So I booked it a couple of times. So now I'm kind of playing with house money. So I'm not even looking at it. Um, I went out to December 30. I think they went into money. I booked them. I think I rolled them up to 35. I'm not sure. So um, when you're but, rolling, what what what's the 35s going for on this thing right now? Um, I can check while we're talking, but the 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 idea there is I wanted to be the guy that bought uh, Netflix 
at 80. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this this is uh, kind of like the, the idea there. This uh, was it, my idea too, yeah, because Scott from my Twitter was the original ones. He's like, this is the Netflix of China. He was given the metrics and stuff. He made a really good argument for it at 18, saying, you know, this is cheaper on a valuation level. Yeah. It's got all of China. It's got the potential to grow here. So I kind of put this in, and I, I had it for like a speculative play in my portfolio. It wasn't yeah. my trading portfolio. I threw it in my investment account as a spec. But it went up so much so fast, it's like, how do you, you know, not no, take some of those profits? The 35, the 35s are five bucks-ish. And I also... <laughs> but, I but should the, just write that. <laughs> well, you could write that. And five bucks I, on the 35s? I wrote a, I wrote a it's quite five, a... No, it's, not, it's five points out of the money and it's going for... Well, how far out? How far out? What, this, what month? This is January. So, so you I go out six of, months. I rolled out of this. I rolled out of Gen, uh, December to January. But here's the thing: if you bought it at what did you say, eighteen last, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So if you write a twenty foot, it's two dollars and forty cents. So okay. So so if you want to be long for half price, you sell the twenty foot and you buy the thirty five call. There you go. That's an interesting strategy. But but if if the price falls through twenty, then you own and it at ugly. twenty. Yeah. It's not that ugly if you have profits already. Yeah, it's true. That's a good point. All right. So, and then there's another one, B-I-L-I. I don't know if you've been watching this one too. And then there's a third yeah. one, H-U-Y-A. All these things kind of just all moving in tandem together and they're all yeah. blasting off. We're going to actually get a report from H-U-Y-A, I believe yeah. after the bell here tonight. But um, I, these are all like Chinese, you know. Yeah, I picked one. On. I just picked one. And the one you that just, just one. yeah, I'm not going to go all three. Well, they all move together. Right. So why triple your bet? <laughs> True. So you're going IQ. Talk just uh, briefly H U Y A though, just on technicals because I mean uh, it's hard to make yeah. any sense of the technicals. It's so short. Uh, I mean the only thing I can probably look at is uh, volume profiles, and it's above the value area if I look at like a 30 minute chart. So from here they will need a reason to run, and you tell me that the earnings are coming, so that's enough a good enough reason to run if they want to. Otherwise it could slide down to. 26 and change, 26 and a half maybe, just from the price action, maybe 27 if we wanted to reload higher. But if there's an event coming, which is an earnings event, yeah. so it's a coin slip as to how they react for the short term. And then there's another one in the chat. This was mentioned by Spinner yesterday, and a lot of our chat participated. It's Sogo, S-O-G-O. Um, somebody said, and I don't know anything about the fundamentals of this oh, company. Geez. I just learned about it yesterday. But somebody's saying like this is a play on search in China. So this thing blasted off yesterday too. It's up another 30 cents and not a great tape here today. I am still long at full disclosure here. Thoughts on SoGo just from technical perspective on a big candle yesterday. Yeah, well, that big candle was probably off of a neckline of some 995-ish. Uh, yeah, 10. And when it, it broke through 10, that's when I bought it. I was like, if this thing takes out 10, that's when I'm getting long. Right. I bought it 10.05. 995 would have been the perfect line for me if I drew the line correctly because it had higher lows knocking on the neckline and the closest highest neckline was somewhere around 993, 4. So 95 was good enough for them to spike it. So up here, this is a prior accident spot. Uh, if you look back to 130 of yeah. this year, uh, yeah. that was the ledge from which it fell apart, uh, right? 1097, $11 or so. It bounced on it in a head and shoulders back then. So um, it, it's it's coming back to it. So from here is how badly scarred those people are that were in it at that point. Gotcha. So it gets a little tough sledding as you get into this 11 handle. Well, it's we're not 11 an 20 obvious this morning. We're up another spot. 30 cents. It's, it's not an obvious entry spot, but given it's so young of a stock, uh, I mean, it, it's so volatile too, so anything can happen. All right, Todd, let's talk about uh, some big U.S. stocks here. Uh, Apple continues its march towards 200. Let's just talk about uh, how you've been playing Apple and also the overall market. Sure. Um, I was long Apple, uh, and I did a diagonal for this week. Uh, the, I, I profited from it, but it wasn't ideal because the, the rally yesterday was a little bigger than I expected. Uh, so... The the 192.5, I was short, but I was long the 190 out in time, so I still made money. But I wanted it to come to 192 and, and 5 and then fail this week or not exceed it this week. So I, it still can work out, but I booked my profit and um, I could re-engage long in it uh, for the future. So now I've booked it several times. And I think I want to set up the next earnings report. But here's it, it, it this close to 195. 
it's going to be pulled by a couple of things. Number one is around numbers. You know, Wall Street likes to get to, say, 200 if it's at 195. And more importantly, this time around, it's going to be so close to a trillion dollars, probably like 40 billion or something like that. So that headline will get some steam and they will probably walk it up there. So if I wanted to bet on Apple, I'd go out to, say, September or December and buy the 205 or 200, 205 debit call spread and just wait. Okay, and uh, thoughts on the overall market? We could go basis the spider or uh, the sure. June S&P? Well, the, the S&P has been tracking. I mean, we were lucky enough um, that we charted the S&P, the SPY, the Qs, the ES perfectly. And I drew ahead of time. If I didn't, I'd be called a liar. Green lines and yellow lines. And the price action has been like perfect along these lines. I did those not to look like a genius or anything. I did those so I can force myself not to listen to the headlines. Um, the headlines you read and you see on TV and uh, in the news are just junk. Just eliminate the noise. Look at the price action. Draw a thesis on your own. Don't believe what you read in the headline. It's moronic at times. Uh, so just trade your own thesis. We've been on the line with Nick Shaheen. He's the author of Create Income with Option Spreads. Joins the show uh, every Tuesday to share his fundamental and technical he, outlook. He's got something else to say. Wait, wait, yeah, wait. yeah. Oh, no, note sorry. on the on. ES. On. So 27 50, 55 has been my target for a while. And I said, if we get there, the bulls have an opportunity to get to 27.92. So this is a neckline of sort to launch them up to 27.92, not in a slingshot manner, but another meander up with dips along the way with headlines. But this morning we had a scary headline, supposed to be scary headline from Mexico. They retaliated on tariffs and nobody's even talking about it. Thanks, Nick. So that was great sure. as always. Yep. Let's jump over here. We got a few other stocks here, a few minutes here. We haven't done any ratings, and there is a ton of ratings to talk about here. Some interesting ones. First, solar catching a downgrade at Bank America. But first, I want to talk about a note from Morgan Stanley on the cruise ships. Uh, they are bearish the cruise ships. Um, oh, I don't have it in front of me now. I could have read it off. But uh, basically, the argument was a double whammy. I'm just going from my memory here now, uh, saying that we've got a high U.S. dollar and higher oil prices, and this is not good for the cruise ships. And if you look at CCL this morning, trading down 4%. You look at RCL this morning, trading down 2.5%. You can look at Norwegian as well, NCLH, trading down almost 3%. You can thank Morgan Stanley for this weakness in the cruise ships because they're all trading down. Joel, jump into the technicals. Let's start with Carnival Cruise. It actually has been slippery. It hasn't been a pretty chart no, here for CCL. It's been I mean, slipping this down. Not this is a very big move um, on an analyst note here. And uh, this, yeah, it is. Yeah. And uh, you know, the, uh, it, you know, the stock has been weak since uh, late March. Uh, it came down, looked like you maybe had a little bottom here near the April low, but that's history. Now uh, that April low was 61.89, and you touched 62.14 just a few sessions ago. So 62 is going to be your resistance. Now, if you can rally a buck and a half, uh, underneath this, your pre-market low is way down at 59.55, 67 cents above the $60 level. Uh, we have not been under 60 since May of last year. You had a 59.68 low, so uh, right around there with the pre-market low. Better hold that 59 and a half or uh, more downside. Uh, let's look at RCL uh, Royal Caribbean. Uh, that. That didn't even get off the mat at all. That's trading down no. 247 as well. You just got to think about the psychological level of uh, 100, even though you are bumping against the uh, the May 2017 low again at, at 103.52. And then what is it? NWCL? NCLH. NCLH. Uh, take a look at this one. I it's mean, no crew's kind of coming off now. So I don't know if they're it a little... Is little late on this note or not but uh that's down a buck 52 that's holding up a little bit better but it's right on the lows of the pre-market session which is 51 51 uh this one hmm we got a relevant number here 50 16 and 50 and a quarter that was your double bottom back in may of this year so you may get may get a look at that in nclh I mean, you look at these things and if you're coming here thinking okay I'm gonna buy on this dip because they're way late to the party 
you're fighting the tape though. And what we just said here at the top of the show is you're in the momentum market. What's hot is hot. What it's not is not. This stuff was already ice cold before the Morgan Stanley note. This isn't going to help it, obviously. And this is taking it down and breaking these stocks down again. So anybody who is thinking, oh, on CCL, you know, 62 is pretty good support. You know, I've got a nice little dividend of 3.29%. So I have a little protection. Those people are all significantly underwater now. So this thing gets back up near 62. They're going to want to sell. So it's tough sledding. So the path of least resistance, believe it or not, is actually down. You look at this thing, it's slowing down three bucks. You think, how low can it go? I'll, we've been saying momentum market can go a hell of a lot lower. I mean, these things, if you look at it out from a weeklies, you know, this had a huge run back in 2016 and 2017. We went from 45 to 65. Now, all of a sudden, you start getting back into that area. So I see, don't see that much below. 60 is probably your first stopping point, but the momentum is not on your side. You're fighting the tape if you're buying these things right now. Long-term investing, a different animal. Maybe if you think, you know, long-term, people are still going to go on cruises and you know, oil will figure itself out and the U.S. dollar isn't going to be strong forever. You know, maybe it's okay. But I'll tell you, as a trade, if you're buying these things now, you're, you're, you're fighting the tape. Especially if you don't like going on cruises. Yeah, and I've been on one cruise. My I actually enjoyed myself on the cruise. I took a carnival cruise back in my honeymoon, which is I think it's 13 years ago now. Man, time flies. Uh, but and it was fun, but you know it was expensive too. And you know I think about that, and you know, I don't know. I've never been on one since, but I'm more cheap. So a lot of people like their cruises. People do it every year, and that's cool and everything. I'm just saying I agree with Morgan Stanley. When you got higher oil prices, it's not helping, and when the U.S. dollar is higher, it's not helping as well. All right. Uh, also, uh, some downgrades in the solar sector here. Uh, with uh, First Solar uh, was heading south before this. Who uh, put the whammy on it today? Uh, this is Bank America uh, buy to neutral and a price target lowered from 83 to 63. Big time lowering price target, stock trading down here. It's been in the gutter as well. This has had an awful four days, $70 four days ago. Had an ugly head and shoulders. Technically, this was thing was ready to break down and it did. Now you're coming into a support area. We got down to 58 bucks, 58.80 back in February. That's your first level of support. Takes that out, it starts to open up. Gordon Johnson was on our show back in the summer of 2017, 48 bucks saying he likes First Solar. He liked First Solar and was buying it. I regretted not buying the stock back then. If it comes back to 50, and that's a long ways away. It ain't going to do that in the next short while. But you know, over the course of the next month or two, if it continues to leak, I will be buying it at 50. I don't know if it gets that low. I'm starting to like it at 59. Lower 50s, I like it a lot more. So this is one I want to add it to my invest portfolio. Um, obviously, maybe we'll get Gordon back on the show, make sure his thesis is still in tack because uh, he knows his stuff. I mean, right. nobody knows solar, I think, better than Gordon. 58.80 was your low in February of this year, and that's right about where we're trading right now. Uh, after that, it uh, drops off to the lower 56 handle. 56.13 was your low in December of last year. And just one other thing that you know I want to point out on First Solar, uh, basis the daily chart here. Uh, you got over 80 and you had that big sell off and then you had the rebound here in mid-May. And that just happened to coincide when the state of California um, enforced that home builders will have to uh, incorporate more solar uh, into the houses, I think, being built after uh, a certain date. So on that news, you know, you got to pop up off the mat. And then that was a sell the news scenario there. Got up to 75, 75 and turned around. So, you know, look at the news, you know, look at it that day. Look how the stock reacts that day or two. And then, you know, if it doesn't keep going in that direction, it, you just have to look at it as a potential sell the news scenario. But uh, just hanging out here on the lows of the pre-market session at 59.05. There's a rating I want to discuss this morning. Sure. Another one. Uh, take two. This is interesting. Yeah. One. So this is a downgrade from BMO Capital, a downgrade from Outperform to Market Perform. Uh, first downgrade for take two that we have in Benzinga Pro since October. And uh, interesting, this is this comes exactly a week ahead of uh, the biggest video game conference of the year, which is E3, which is next starts next Tuesday in Los Angeles. Uh, that's that is the premier video game event. Uh, conference on the calendar. Uh, Take two, always a big player there. So interesting that they caught a downgrade uh, ahead of this big event. It's come. It, it's come back a long ways. It had the earnings report there. Remember that day? It had the earnings report was down like ten bucks and actually closed up that day. 
And I was on the show saying, I think I, I think it was Activision Blizzard, actually. Yeah. This just seems like an eternal bid under all these stocks. Whenever they pull back, they seem to always come back. And I'm on the record saying that by the end of the year, Activision, Take-Two, and EA Sports are going to be making new all-time highs. Um, I'm still going to say that because this eSports thing is for real. These are the, the pure plays that are traded. People want to own these things just for the eSports. And um, I still think EA, TTWO, and ATVI are at new all-time highs by the end of the year. It's going to not be smooth sailing. You're going to get these pullbacks to buy, but I'm a buyer of pullbacks on take two. I would love it down near 100 bucks. I don't think you're going to get down there. Um, I think eventually you'll find bids again. Now, this could put a little pressure on it whenever you get a downgrade. You know, it has been one for a while, even though it's BMO, uh, which isn't as influential as, a, as if it was a U.S. broker. It's still going to put pressure on the stock because there's people who, you know, who are nervous when you have an analyst getting negative on a stock and that there hasn't been anybody negative for a while. One ten's huge. Needs the whole one ten. Starts taking that out, then it could go. be a slippery yep. slope quickly. Yep. Yep, I was just looking 0992, 0973, 0986. Those just a sample of your lows coming from uh, late May. And uh, yeah, actually, May 31st low was 110.19. Um, I did hear that it's just along the lines of uh, eSports that uh, the Barclays Center uh, sold out over 20,000 tickets for, I don't know, was it a uh, Fortnite championship or something like that that uh you know they haven't been able to sell that many tickets for a basketball game but they, they sold out and i think it was like 75 dollar seats to go watch people play video games so uh it's unreal yeah. it's unreal like and it's for real there is people coming here this esports thing is for real and it's getting bigger by the day I mean, you know, Joel, you know, we've been talking about esports, you know, on the show here for the last six, or at least last three months. And I mean, it seems like every time there's a play on esports, it's hot. And obviously, these were the obvious plays, but you know, the little plays too, you know, are, are sometimes, you know, they take off, like even, you know, the streaming, that BILI we were talking about, you know, a little while ago, um, you know, Chinese play, maybe it's IQ and some of the other ones driving it up, but it's streaming online too. And if you look at their source of revenue, Half of it's coming from streaming, you know, video games. So, I mean, the video game thing is just hot right now. People like watching people play video games. And then maybe it's because they're learning, like our buddy Pete, who's really into this at Baron Rings, you know, he's t saying, you know, they like to watch, you know, these, these things because they're playing the video games themselves. And they learn new things and new ways to play the video game by watching other people. You don't have that in traditional sports. Well, you do to a certain extent. I guess you can watch your best players. But, I mean, you're not going to be able to mimic the moves of Alex Ovechkin, you know, out there on the ice, you know, or, you know, looking at LeBron James. You're not going to be able to copy off him. He's just skilled. But in a video game, it's a little different situation. Yes, it's skilled, but you can learn, oh, I didn't know he could do that, little tricks of the game. So I think that's why it's got such a good audience. And what are you? what eSport are you training uh, Spencer for? I should just get him on there playing video games here because some of these people, the ninja guy, so, you know, we've talked about this too, ninja on Twitch, you know this, Spencer, he's making like what, like half a million a month or something playing video games? Yeah. That's without all, any of his other stuff too that's going on. I mean, I saw him meet Mark Cuban. They're going to do business together. I mean, this guy, is this kid is getting rich playing video games. Unbelievable. So, you know, I was pretty good at video games when I was a kid too, but I kind of stopped when I learned to drive a car. So I guess if I could have kept doing that, maybe I could be one of these video game players. But you I guess are, stock Dennis. trading is kind of like a video are. game. You kind of are. Kinda, stock like, trading is kind of like a video game. Yeah. So maybe that's a I you, Yeah, no, it, 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 it's funny uh, that you mentioned it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, just an interesting chart just brought up here in the chat. Uh, GameStop. Uh, don't look now, but it's off the mat. It's had two pretty good days. Uh, not sure if there's any news associated with it. It's game. Squeeze them. I'm sorry. Squeeze them. Squeeze them. Big short interest. I don't know. I, I let's go look. I I think there is. I think there's some short interest in here, and it's just now it's like you know just everything video game is starting to go up here. This is a breakout for GameStop. Yeah. Anyways, the dividend is the dividend still there, or did they cut it? Because the dividend on this is ten percent. Is that is that still there, or is it like is that old news and it's been cut? Uh, I think that's still there. They yeah. Last I saw. They had raised it. That was like a, that was a year ago. Uh, I think it's still there. This is hot right now. And you want to know the short interest? Sure. Forty-two percent. Ouch. 
oh, 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 this has got room to run, guys. Yeah. This could squeeze them. When I just said I was, you know, saying squeeze them because I figured it was probably short squeeze. Now you see 42%. You're like, oh, it is a short squeeze. This could go to 15 and like the next day, day or two. Not even joking. It's went from 12, 50. This thing could run. Now, that being said, long term, I don't know if like a physical video game store, everything is like free. They're selling games. I don't know long term of the business model. Short term, I think there's good potential for the squeeze to continue. So would not surprise me in the least if this is over 15 bucks in the next week. Yeah, next week, yeah, clearing 1445. You're trading up 16 cents here uh, in the pre market. 1445 uh, marks your high on March 21st. You also got up to 1431. So calling 1450 here, uh, they'd really get some shorts uh, scrambling here. Not a much really between 14. 50 Dennis mentioned 15, but a lot of era does issue perhaps up to $16. All right, Spoo's down a buck here, showing some weakness 2744 and a half. Let's keep an eye on that closing price 2745 and a half. That coincides with your mid range on the day. Really nothing on the downside. Your pre market low 42 even. I'm looking at the intraday low from yesterday that's 39.75. Not looking for any major downside until that is taken out. Just want to give you an update on SOGO imbalance because this is a, a New York stock. Two hundred and eleven thousand to buy here right now is the buy imbalance. And you just saw it blast off to eleven thirty nine. That's when the buy imbalance just jumped from fifty thousand to two hundred thousand. I'm looking in the book. Sixty nine thousand eleven fifty. So yeah, that's probably where it's gonna stall maybe off the hop. Then it's actually pretty open. There's not even that much at 12, but I still think I think the thing could, I think it's gonna you know, stall out here. This is gonna be one of those plays where it maybe opens up, you know, pretty strong. Maybe gets a little rip in the first five or ten minutes and then stalls out. So I'm probably going to be dumping, and I'm still long it, but I'm probably gonna be dumping somewhere into this strength this morning. I was saying, you know, that I think it could go to 12 bucks. I still think it could go to 12 bucks here, um, but I think I'm going to be lightening up. Uh, into the strength here somewhere this morning, somewhere early this morning, like shortly after the open. Okay. 313,000 to buy. There's this people coming. So here what is big that? Is now. that 30,000 for well, Skinner here, okay. and 30,000 so, for Med Seeker? You've got to look, you've got to have all your information. We don't have this here. So I, I get the post from the imbalance, obviously coming through, you know, through my system. That's through ready. Uh, I got 313,000 to buy, but it just went from 200 to 300, but I've got the open book. Somebody just put a hundred thousand share buy order at 11. So that 11 isn't going to impact the open because it's going to open way above 11. So 100,000 of that, even though it just jumped from two to three, and that's when you saw everybody buying it up to 1145, it wasn't like another 100,000 of the market. Somebody went 100,000 at 11. So that isn't as you know influential because 11 is not even going to get filled right now. It's 1143. So it's basically 200,000 that's pushing the price right now. But 200,000, I don't see much in the book. I see 69,150. If it, it does have over 200000 to buy at the open, it could open over a lot. You want a target? You want a target, Dennis? I, I kind of do because I want to sell this morning, honestly. Like after, you know, if it gets up near 12, it's pretty, pretty mm, big move. I'd fast, say, you know? I'd say 13. You think it could get to 13? Yep. So I hold a little, I, I, I think, I think, well, I it don't could know. Go like, anywhere. I, I, all I know is I'm going to sell part of my position here early this morning. At 12, uh, 13. I'm going to hold some. 13 is your high for the year. That was made in January. 13 even right on the kisser. So uh, after you take out, after you took out that 1107, that's your next monthly high. So get out there at 1295, Dennis. JD taking off too. Spinner uh, saying JD had a great day yesterday. It's Chinese stocks are just hot. JD has been in the gutter forever. It's one that has not participated. Yesterday finally had a good candle. Obviously, uh, trading up over two bucks. It's continuing this morning. It's up another buck here this morning. So two-day rule. You know my two-day rule, guys. I talk about it all the time. A stock that has an outside move usually will follow through the next morning. That's what we're seeing in JD, and that is what we're seeing also in SOGO. Okay. All right. 9.04, working overtime today. Spencer, what's on the docket for you? Uh, on the show tomorrow, we have an, another pair of guests. Phil Davis will join the show, as will someone from ICO Alert. We haven't had a crypto guest on, a uh, specific crypto guest on in a while, it seems like. But uh, ICO Alert is a company that we found. Uh, they basically act as a calendar for uh, pre-ICOs and uh and that, so that'll, that'll be on tomorrow's show, but if you want to catch any part of today's show or any previous show, you can do so on our podcast, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, uh, MixCloud, I think that's the list of all everything right now, Podbean, uh, 
Yeah, got that. Okay, so uh, just go on any of those platforms and search for Pre-Market Prep or Benzinga, and you'll find our podcast there. Thanks to our guests today, Nick Sheehan and Michael Kelly, or Kevin Kelly, excuse me. Thanks to all of you who joined uh, the show via our chat, premarket.benzinga.com and youtube.com slash Benzinga TV. Hope you all have had a good morning and have a good rest of your day. We'll see you on Wednesday.